Welcome everyone to the Generation Z Guys podcast by Lostar UM India. This is a series of podcasts where we discuss all things Gen Z. This is the episode three of the podcast, and today we'll be discussing Gen Z's interaction with some of the key categories. If you're new to the podcast and you like listening to this one, you can go back and listen to the previous ones. And also, we'll be dropping a few more in the next few days, so you can stay tuned for those ones. I'm Kulnath, and you'll be hearing my voice through the podcast. And as always, with me, I have Lostar UM CEO, our Strat Guru, our Mark Darshak, Aditi Mishra. Hi, Aditi. Hi Kula, uh, glad to be here and this is a topic of great interest to all of us marketeers in terms of understanding this new generation, the Gen Z as we call them. Um, just a little bit of an introduction on how we have gone about understanding them and hmm. rather than doing a traditional kind of a research, we actually roped in what we call the Gen Z insiders, mm -hmm. you know, a, a group of Gen Z who have worked with us uh, across the last two, three years in terms of understanding what is important to them, how do they engage with brands, how do they consume media, what are the ways that they decide on different things and we hope that some of these findings would be of interest to all of you as well. Yeah, we'll start ahead with today's discussion and today it's all about Gen Z's interaction with some of the key categories and there are multiple categories or many many categories under the sun but we have looked at four key categories here in this case. Uh, firstly we'll be discussing on tech then we'll move over to auto industries and then we'll look at what we are calling health and wellness as a category and lastly we'll be looking at how shopping is evolving under the Gen Z's. So these four we'll be discussing so starting with technology. Technology is present everywhere, specifically in the times of the today's generation, Gen Z. Like they are born with a phone in their hands. <laughs> that's that's one of the joke, yeah. So uh, so so that's that's the kind of generation that they are in, and so they are definitely enjoying a lot of the comfort that technology provides, a lot of the convenience that, that technology provides. They are tech uh, native. I'm a millennial, so I'm a tech pioneer. As I'd like to call our generation. So, uh, so they are tech native. So they are very much tech is like ever present for them. So therefore, they are uh, while they're enjoying the convenience, they're also uh, right now looking at some of the other side of the technology as well. So there's a bit of dichotomy about technology. Is it over usage? Is it privacy in intrusion and all that? So that is also been discussed. Yeah. So uh, like you rightly said, you know, these are the digital natives in that sense, and they have grown up uh, with an extension and a seamless online offline uh, kind of a world. You know, they, they don't really uh, distinguish between the two worlds saying this is digital or, the, or this is offline and, mm -hmm. and it's a seamless, uh, I would say, shift that they are very comfortable with. Yeah. Uh, so you have situations, you know, where they're sitting in a group and they're chatting to each other while sitting next to each other yes, on a yes, phone, yes. Which, which sort of seems a little uh, strange, but yeah. that, that's how it is. And yes. and uh, it's, it's quite comfortable. Yeah. So uh, uh, that is one thing that makes uh, technology like an integral part of their lives. And, mm -hmm. and that's the discussion that we were having earlier. That yeah. You know, is is technology a thing by itself, or is technology underpinning everything? It's an enabler mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of them living a, a more rich, a more uh, fulfilled uh, kind of a life, yeah. and uh, that's why when we look at some of the data that uh, you know you, you'll be talking about, they have all spoken about how technology makes their life better. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, yes, there is a question on what is the information that people are collecting about me? What is the information that I'm sharing? Mm -hmm. And interestingly, in India, what we have found is that uh, people are not so worried about what am I sharing as long as that is coming back to me to help me to get something better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you want my data because you want to give me special offers. Mm -hmm. You want my data because you will tell me what best I can do next. Uh, that is data or information that I'm okay sharing. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want technology to be intrusive or uh, you know changing the way that I'm engaging with people around me. So it's it's a my choice, yeah. my way of using technology, which is uh, quite an important piece that has emerged. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Like you, you mentioned about how uh, uh, that it is for me and is it making my life better? Is it adding yeah. value to my life? That That's is right. that is the main, main point. And also the whole bit about that uh, technology is everywhere and, and it is uh, kind of 
very democratic these days so everybody is familiar with technology it's not it's not exclusive to a certain class or certain set of gen z's so and and that kind of makes them at an equal platform so that enables them to reach or make them their lives better their or get them to get better information better education and all of that kind of stuff the other side which we were we were discussing that whole bit about how they are also conscious about is it over usage is it to do with like more I- I- intrusion of technology uh, so that's where uh, the one trend that i have observed uh, some bit in india also some of the gen z's uh, that we spoken to they are also talking about that ki how uh, they're also re- remembering the good old feature phones <laughs> so yeah and turning it turning your smartphone off for a few days a lot of people have last two years after this uh, whole bit about the data policies and all that and uh, with facebook and all then some of the people have started desubscribing to those platform or getting out of those platform that has no, more so happened in the generation which is like millennials and the gen x lesser so in gen z but nonetheless gen z are aware of all these things and they're evaluating with a rational mindset and rational thought process and that's how they're looking at this other point that i i just want to discuss is how when they think of technology they also think of uh, more so in the product side of it then the technology uh, back end of it like for example what we discussed uh, that which are the brands that are very much into your mind when you think about technology then all the product related brands came out more strongly like uh, and and there there are shades there also like how gen z prefer certain brands versus and we compared them with some of the millennials brands like apple uh, brand like oneplus those are the brands which are gen z's prefer very much uh, versus other brands in the similar space which is like samsung is preferred more by millennials uh, more so uh, other thing what surprising brand that emerged in this product uh, tech space was uh, boat boat because uh, and and something that we discussed previously that how rational functional they are and also they are constantly thinking about the value proposition as well so there i think boat has found this sweet spot of providing decent tech at good value so that's why they're switching to all of those brands and uh, those brands are appealing much more yeah yeah so i i think an interesting point uh, which emerged and uh, which was like a little surprising because typically you would think that uh, you know when you ask for what do you think is a great technology brand mm-hmm. uh, uh, automatically the mind went to product mm-hmm. you know while everybody is using uh, let's say a google mm-hmm. or everybody is using some form of maybe meta whether it's facebook or ig or mm-hmm. you know engaging through reels or snapchat yeah. they didn't mention these brands as in a way tech brands so it was a very uh, uh, i think a kind of sharp view into their minds saying that these are enablers mm-hmm. these are things that uh, you know allow me to do what i want to do mm-hmm. but when you ask me for a brand i'm mm-hmm. actually thinking of a product mm-hmm. so that was a uh, i think quite an interesting lens uh, that we sort of got also what we find is that uh, gen z is uh, probably the quickest in terms of exploring new platforms exploring yeah. new uh, ways of doing things i think the whole buzz around uh, uh, chat gpt and we were talking to you know some of the people saying that uh, what is your view mm-hmm. and uh, most of them were quite open about yeah it's okay i can check this i can i can also try this great for projects great mm-hmm. for you know those kind of things uh, and and the other thing that uh, i also found when we looked at uh, some of these uh, interactions is that uh, they are a lot more open and we did discuss it in you know their personality and how they engage with the world uh, they are they're quite open about bringing their whole self mm. so uh, you know whether it's something like a real me where you, you are looking at what's happening right now uh, without filters without any other engagement mm-hmm. is what you are okay sharing with the larger world mm-hmm. so so there is uh, that sense of enablement which also comes because you don't feel the need to hide you feel that technology yeah. is allowing you to do a lot more things in the way you want Yeah you mentioned about uh, newer platforms and certainly they're open to try new new platforms that's why we see a sudden boom of discord as a platform and then largely driven by gen z's and and that community feeling and sense of community uh, and also at, around the time of the pandemic the when we uh, were doing the first rounds of the research so people were talking about house party as a platform and then how they were en- able to engage and that can sail through the entire pandemic's uh, time period also yeah uh, but uh, another point that you mentioned is how 
they are using all of these other technology platform like google and all that that is at the background and they're using it even when they're quoting that how technology provides solution the first brand is google that they mention but when i ask about specifically brand there yeah. all the products come yeah, yeah, so yeah. we'll listen to uh, asta she speaks about exactly that how technology and per se google has come to her rescue like it's like a uh, drive i can say and a uh, lot of us who but not all data was there and the drive has loaded it in. so i just when i got a new phone i could upload it once again in my phone download it all the contacts all the uh, documents which were there all the updated photographs were there so technology is just there like i can store all of my data in google drive by google gmail so Very nice. If anybody uses this phone, he can get back his all data. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because yeah, actually, I, I have to uh, go to Shrinagar. So it was a time uh, in the August last year, 2019, when um, our PM struck out the 370 article and Kashmir becomes the part of India constitutionally. Yeah. So at that point, um, there was no direct contact between me and my father. and i have to go to my home so i missed my flight so actually my father booked the ticket for me um and then technology come to rescue me i booked my online ticket at the airport right then and there get the check uh, in good in just within half an hour so like because uh, if i don't have a access to technology it would uh, take me like a week or something to do it again So here, like the, exactly the point that we were discussing, that how Google and such platforms, or even Facebook, Instagram, where all of those platforms gives them a way to or enable them to uh, engage with others, or or gives them a backbone to their entire life. But yeah. yet, uh, as a brand, they don't stand out too often versus uh, the devices like, mm. for example, Apple, OnePlus. Those are the first brands that comes to their mind. Yeah, yeah that was an in- interesting thing, uh, and how rationally they evaluate their lives and uh, how balances their life. And exactly that's where we'll uh, move over to the next uh, category, which one we want to discuss is all about auto. And uh, there, what we found is uh, auto is uh, something one category that has uh, with the growth of the nation. It, it, it is becoming uh, more and more common uh, and more and more popular and uh, people are so therefore beyond just the mark of success auto has moved over to also functionality also it's all about a rational choice and rationally coming down to their choice of brand their cho- choice of product and uh, how their rational factors are influencing a lot in their auto choices as well versus earlier days it was all about like badi gaadi sort of a uh, philosophy that was there like lambi gaadi and all that we remember whole those sedan ads long sedan ads and all that no, now it, it is beyond that that is no longer good enough you have to give me a value proposition a so- strong value proposition a clear differentiation and uh, not just a technology advantage but technology advantage that can add to my life so that's what yeah so i think mobility as a whole has uh, you know sort of undergone this um, evaluation i would say especially in the younger audience because because they're also looking at how it impacts the world in in a way you know because they are very conscious of uh, you know wanting to have a better world uh, and and therefore this whole thing of do i want ownership or yeah. do i just want usage yeah. and am i am i okay with shared usage yeah. for example uh, the the growth of ev so mm-hmm. uh, uh, when we spoke to some uh, people in delhi they spoke about you know this option of hire an mm-hmm. electric bike for short this thing mm-hmm. which you mm-hmm. just you know take and and depending on how you are using it you know you pay more or you pay less yeah. so uh, there is this this more discerning understanding than uh, it it's what uh, uh, mobility gives me in terms of you know just going from point a to point b versus necessarily demonstrating my ownership of a better vehicle mm-hmm. so yes i do want mobility but there are different ways of looking at mobility versus what you know generations before me have done yeah so that that's definitely come up as as a point yeah for sure but clear uh, stand out fee, uh, aspects of the automotive when they evaluate which are like all uh, more focused in terms of price and safety so those are the clear value proposition and strong benefit that 
is pretty much like non-negotiable for them and another aspect that you just spoke about is a uh, whole about ev and how ev uh, that they're evaluating ev there uh, it, it is also to do with government is pushing a lot of major shift towards ev these days so that is happening but at the same time while the government is move, making this push towards ev gen z's are very rational in their evaluation so uh, they are talking about while ev is something a new technology new brands are launching new evs these days but having said that are the charging station good enough for me is the charging network good enough for me to take it for a long drive or not and is, is it actually uh, how much is the cost differential and where does the power source comes from also and it's just not a way of greenwashing so those those are always also conversation that's happening around ev and much led by the gen z so we'll hear from kartike he speaks about these aspects about of uh, automotive industry aur jab electric vehicle ki baat hai to bhi india mein इतनी एवेलेबिलिटी ईवी की इसकी अगर हम कार में बात करें तो कार में एक ताजा ही गाड़ी आती है नेक्सोन ईवी और अभी एम जी एक्टर ने निकाली है तो मेनली ये दो ही अभी हमारे पास कॉम्पिटिटिव है मतलब चौबीस रिपेंट कहूंगा बाकी हम लोग मोटरसाइकिल से बात करें तो एक बाइक आती है रिवोल्ट बात करूंगा तो इंडिया में एक्चुअली मेन दिक्कत ये ना कि एक बार चार्जिंग नहीं है क्योंकि लाइन में इतना ज्यादा भीड़ इतनी ज्यादा जगह ही नहीं है तो बात सारे घूम फिर के आती है कि या तो लैंड में ज्यादा एक कॉल करो या फिर पॉपुलेशन कंट्रोल करो दोनों चीजें करोगे तो इसमें इनोवेशन प्रॉब्लम आएगी या फिर लोगों का जो है कुछ भी ज्यादा नहीं करो भाई हम लोग हो सकते हैं कि जिसकी ईवी अमेरिका में है कैनेडा में है जितनी भी आपकी डेवलपेशन है तो वहां पर पॉपुलेशन काफी कम तो वहां पर ईवी की बिक्री और वहां पर चार्जिंग की शिकायत आने लग सकते हैं यहाँ पर हमें दस 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 या दोनों पैसे ना ओके Uh, recently, I've been this to uh, auto cars, so there I've seen many electric cars coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a very good way. Uh, like right now, there's no state in like we can say like in India, there it would be a good run for electric cars as there's lack of electricity in many villages and areas. But in the advance, like a decade ahead, yeah, it would be possible to have electric cars. Hmm. Okay. 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 So yeah, so so a lot of these new brands are coming and they're launching EVs and but uh, without the infrastructure, the, the uh, these genzies are questioning EVs and also the fact that when whenever new product is launched, since a lot of the information is readily available, so then they are able to discuss all of that stuff and see all the sides. Like if you uh, notice, uh, Ola has launched their scooters and with that, there's a lot of this discussion around like how is it suitable for Indian condition or not because some of the there's some malfunction with the products and all that because of the heat and uh, 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 the Indian conditions are not suitable to that. So there's a lot of conversation happening on that side, on the charging network side, and is it suitable for me to drive long range, or is it only for city commute? All of those things are constantly that they're discussing, evolve, uh, and because of excess of information at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the one thing that we've learned about Gen Zs is that you know when they are interested in a topic, and because technology offers them the access, they do get into a lot of research, they mm-hmm. get into a lot of discussions mm-hmm. with. different kind of people so ev is definitely an area which is of interest uh, moving forward i mean uh, there are a lot of clients that we work with and and you're right i mean ola versus let's say an ether which is mm. more an indigenous mm. brand yeah. and grown for indian conditions mm. there are differences in performance and and so on but uh, uh, the other thing which i think is also helping in the growth of ev is is just uh, one of course let's say uh, the spread of what is the impact of ev understanding the the fact that uh, an ev vehicle is obviously less polluting mm-hmm. but at the same time the the challenge of you know having a charging network yeah. and and lot of work being done by the government in yeah. terms of having independent partners not just the people who produce evs yeah. uh, but having independent partners who can provide multiple charging stations there are in fact societies who are now choosing to have ev charging stations mm-hmm. a, inside yeah. them to yeah. to promote this so this is probably a trend that we will see evolve very rapidly in the next 2 3 years yeah. especially with the increasing uh, cost of fossil fuel so <laughs> that uh, that is something yeah. that yeah. Uh, that we see impacting the world yeah for sure now with that we'll move over to the third category which is which is all about health and wellness they are gen z's are always focus on health and uh, well being in their lives uh, but it is when they talk about health it, it is not just their physical health and there is largely to do with lot of mental health as well and how mental health is very much important to maintain a very good physical health uh, healthy lifestyle other aspect of that is also to do with with the with the mental health and mental health focus uh, it's also to do with lot of 
a focus on self and self development and uh, last two years people have had a lot of time to evo- uh, evaluate uh, themselves and see where they are and where they want to head and specifically gen z's uh, they are in such a transitional phase of their life currently and yet they are been stuck with this whole thing of like two years of sudden pause so they they uh, at home that they are sitting and they are thinking about how they want to progress in life and what they want to do next so they had invested them a lot more on self focus and self development that has made them focus on uh, th- themselves and also become more um, more compassionate a- a- as a human being yeah yeah uh, uh, that, that's very true and uh, like you said you know that uh, the last two three years which have been challenging and and now we don't know how things are going to evolve with the mm-hmm. new news from china yeah. and and you know the testing which now the government is introducing yeah. so uh, Uh, they are more conscious they they are uh, you know uh, evaluating what does it exactly mean to be in a world like this mm-hmm. and uh, because there is a lot more information there is no, there is no stigma uh, attached to you know asking some of these questions because uh, we've seen a lot yeah. of brands in fact talk about mental health yes. across the last 2 3 years uh, wherein this is an issue which is being brought to the forefront saying this is something we need to be conscious about as a society and and we need to look for solutions we need to look for ways that we can uh, make it easier for people uh, to stay in a world which is challenging uh the other thing that we we also saw is that uh, you know because of this whole introspection and understanding about self the the way they look at gender uh, you know traditional mm-hmm. gender uh, yeah. things to be done yeah. or or roles yeah. there is a there is a lot more fluidity yeah. uh if we look at uh, how they define their groups and tribes again there is a kind of redistribution wherein they are okay going with different groups for different kind of solutions yeah. it's not that you know this is my group and i have to do everything with them there are different teams or or people in their radar where they bond on different kind of topics mm-hmm. so that that's also i would say a, a redispersion of the tribe uh, versus the traditional way which is also something that we saw with the gen z yeah another aspect of their uh the whole thing about health and well-being and mental satisfaction is very important for them is also to reflecting in their career paths and career choices as well so where we asked them ki what is the key criteria for you to cho- uh, per- choose a particular job and stay on a particular job it was to do with uh, whether they are mentally satisfied or not that is the first criteria that's the largest criteria and followed by one of the another larger, larger criteria is, is the desire to contribute and be make the society better around yeah. them so that's that's the other aspect of that like whole bit about self focus and how the self development is contributing to the development of the society and that cycle uh, we'll hear from uh, now uh, another quote from one of the gen z members mental satisfaction is important because if you are not uh, um, getting if you feel that your the work that you are putting in so much of hard work is not getting in you are not getting output out of it uh, you are not getting or you are not able to give that to the society or whatever if that sort of a mentality is there then doing a work without calculating the mental satisfaction factor would be difficult so yeah for me it has to be like mental satisfaction monetary benefits and uh, ethical ground the three factors have to like uh in the around simultaneously and the what the intersection of the venn diagram of these circles will be the area i would like to okay Okay, healthy lifestyle. I don't think it's my own view. Healthy lifestyle. I don't think a person should be like uh, symbolic from means uh, this should this kind of body he should have or this kind of physique he should have. I think uh, you you are able to get hungry at time. You are able to get food, right food, right amount of sleep. You do not get depressed or angry. Hmm. I think that is healthy. Hmm. we are not addicted to any kind of bad habits just like smoking and all that you eat good uh, home cooked food so don't eat junk food outside means overall you are happy means you are healthy i think so so we can all that i don't think it matters that much mm-hmm. if you are if there is a interest you are making career it's your personal love it's okay but i don't one should get pressurized by the things like this i don't think so okay got it uh, healthy i mean uh, another reason another thing about healthy lifestyle one should be more productive mm-hmm. you should 
create more ideas you should you should be able to produce more hmm. and work more hmm. that is i think healthy that is useful also for as an individual as society hmm. Uh, so that's the that's the part of the mental satisfaction and health and well-being uh, that they focus on. And lastly, we'll move over to uh, shopping and how shopping is changing. And and uh, pr- probably no surprise to that that definitely uh, because of the entire pandemic situation and last two years, people have stayed home. People have ordered a lot of from home, and online shopping is definitely on the rise and much higher. Uh, one thing that I would want to talk about that eight ten years back around that time when online shopping was coming, then. Uh, most of the thing was around discount driven or deal driven and that was the key factor while still is there end of the reason sale or great indian festival all these properties are massive and like key uh, time stamp in the year for people to shop around those are there but at the same time the whole bit about convenience of shopping from home that thing is kind of like it, it's it's ingrained in the gen z so they have really enjoyed it so they are enjoying that uh, benefits and that's what uh, they that's what is the key benefit that they see of online shopping or factor that influence them to shop online yeah so uh, that is ex- actually what is rise uh, you know leading to the rise of what we call fast commerce or mm-hmm. quick commerce mm-hmm. india is uh, one of the markets where uh, quick commerce is uh, growing much much faster than the world and interestingly i was talking to you know somebody in the states mm-hmm. <laughs> a little time ago and there was this interesting chat on you know if i was to order something on quick commerce their concept of uh, quick commerce is is uh, one day mm. uh, and and uh, you know we were, we were laughing about how in india it's like 15 minutes mm. and uh, how you can actually you know decide to get up in the morning and say okay I, for my bath i need this and huh. in the next 15 minutes it's there yeah. so uh, uh, this this whole convenience of quick commerce uh the ability to not block a lot of money and and you know therefore engage very quickly in terms of you know what's of interest this is this is what i want to do that yeah. that's grown very very rapidly in in the last 2 uh, 3 years wherein there's just more access it's much more convenient to do things on your mobile than you know maybe walk down to the grocery store around you yeah. uh but also what what we've seen is that at the same time uh this is okay when i know what i want to buy you know so typically in the marketing jargon we would call it you know the bottom funnel decision say mm-hmm. i know what i want to buy i have already decided i just mm-hmm. need to place mm-hmm. the order mm-hmm. so it's is the ordering which is uh, shifting online but uh, when we want to talk about uh, you know why i need to buy a brand or what is the kind of thing that i want to do we still see a lot of engagement playing a critical role and therefore for brands this whole exploratory or the discovery part the top funnel part is not just going to be on commerce it's it's going to be uh, an omni channel story wherein you will have to create experiences which are which are richer which are more engaging which could be online or offline yeah. but then lead on seamlessly to this uh, you know this last part part of the journey where you purchase very quickly yeah and another p- part of that is maybe because they stayed home for 2 years the craving for touch and feel of a product yeah. that has also grown and also the fact that uh, while advertising informs them a lot but at the end of the day also wants to get their hands on experience on something and then decide that that whole uh, feel of the product and then is it for me or not that that they want to decide for them so that's actually uh, what something uh, ninad will speak about Change the perception, but they do tell me of something that is coming up. All right. Okay. So, for example, if I say that uh, somebody says that this uh, this this laptop is faster than the other one, you know, experience the speed with us. If they say it like that, then I I am I'm sure that they have they are coming up with this line of you know new line of technology. But has it? Uh, may have changed my perception towards that brand. Of course not. I would say I will. I'm going to use that technology first. I'm going to use that uh, feature first. It can go to three even bigger levels. Right? When paper books came in, they were like, "Yeah, you know, experience the taste of your home and all of that." You know, mothers taste and everything. I so I knew that they are uh, trying to sell me a you know new product, but. Then I know I can make a lemonade by myself at my home, or I'm gonna by myself at my at my home. I tried once and did it. It won't change my perception towards what the product is. Do advertisements make you change your perception? Do you believe in the advertisements? Not anymore. I used to, but then uh, there is a lot of thing that there is a lot of thought process that I put into it, and I realized that it's just 
they they are trying to play with your brain right and what you have to do is not allow them to like for just for example there was this one time i went uh, to a mall with my roommate and she needed to buy one toothpaste which was for some uh, 50 rupees or 40 rupees right but she then saw an offer which advertised that if you buy four toothpaste together you will get it for 150 rupees if you buy four individually normal according to normal mathematics four individual toothpaste should cost you 160 rupees but for that pack of four toothpaste would just uh, cost her uh, cost her 150 rupees so she believes she saved 10 rupees but i saw it from the view that she in fact spent 110 rupees more for something which was of no use to her so i think it's just a way to you and i think you have to be sensible enough to not let you let that affect you you have to actually go into the pros and cons of whenever if i'm going to be affected by advertisement or if i see a product is fascinating i actually go online search about the pros and cons of it actually consult people from that field and then decide so no advertisements don't affect me so in so touch and feel of a product that that is something that experience of that product is something that will eventually kind of gets them to finally decide and then eventually they might turn to quick commerce or any of the platform that they decide so that's why it's it's like online offline the journey is throughout different platform it's not just very linear that people will go online and search online place an order immediately it's not very linear it's very it's, it's flowing from different different channels from one to the other yeah and uh, you know interestingly the way way we heard uh, you know the quote that that he spoke about i think it it also gives us an insight into why d2c is is mm-hmm. such a rising phenomenon because very clearly you know they are not fixed to the paradigms just because i did a brand earlier doesn't mean i'll do it again mm-hmm. every time i'm i'm going to do the purchase i probably evaluate and reevaluate and uh, being younger being more exposed to information they they are more evaluative yeah. and and hence they are open to new brands or new ways of doing things yeah. and that's why some of the uh, categories uh, we are seeing such a rapid growth yeah. uh, in terms of d2c whether it's uh, you know brands like wow mama earth yeah. or even some of the traditional brands i mean samsung for example it's it's looking at d2c globally they are one of the largest d2c brands so mm-hmm. uh, there is this whole uh, realization that brands and marketers have that yeah. while we are are going to be available in traditional channels yeah. and and they will be very important moving forward because yeah. we don't see the the change in terms of ecom becoming the largest yeah. but definitely there is a rationale for how d2c needs to play a role in in your entire channel mix yeah. and there is opportunity for newer brands to come and make an entry in some of these small areas yeah. you know so you may never have scale but but you yeah. can have a very uh, uh, sort of uh, i would say uh, engaged audience yeah. which is experimenting so in a way entry barriers to certain categories are reduced yeah. uh, in a way there is a lot more potential to try and check out different kind of products yeah. and formats yeah. so these are some of the things that as marketers and communicators we need to think about how do we make the journey seamless how do we look at multiple ways of engaging versus you know just one way of connecting to this audience yeah certainly and uh, i think the whole bit about uh, we spoke on around discord that the sense of community and these some of these uh, d2c brands they are able to like foster that sense of community yeah. a lot better and that has kind of uh, got given rise to the such uh, brands so so th- those are the four categories that we want to just quickly uh, bring to you and uh, discuss over any final thoughts or anything No I think uh, the the thing that uh, we we all need to to consider is that uh, you know the purchase remains a purchase so uh, the only things that that have maybe got pulled out a little more is the rationality behind the purchase mm-hmm. because uh, while emotion is important it's not going to be the only thing so uh-huh. a lot more evaluation yeah. on the promise that a brand or a product is making yeah. a lot more checks yeah. a lot more questioning whether it's through the community or or whether uh, it is through search that they are doing online yeah. and once you are deciding it's not that the consumer is yours forever so so a lot more you know agility and being on your toes is yeah. something that uh, people 
like us need to think about yeah. uh, the other thing i think we want to keep at the back of our minds is sometimes we get carried away with you know the latest uh, shiniest tech solution mm-hmm. uh, while these are interesting and good in terms of capturing attention yeah. they may not be great in terms of uh, you know building the kind of relationship we want so so balancing out the story or the authenticity that the brand is bringing to the table along with the experience that we are able to drive for the gen z certainly certainly and uh, thanks for listening to us uh, guys and uh, if you want to listen to such podcast so please search add and follow us and we'll be dropping a few more in the next few days uh, so thanks for listening bye 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 bye